Calculus, what is the problem? Calculus. Setting up the problem. It's being able to really understand what the problem is. That's the pro that was the problem with the max and min. That's the same problem with the related rates. The problem is not the calculus. It's just <coughs> setting up the original problem. So understanding the problem is the most important part. And as I go through and do the example questions, you'll see that I'm going to write down everything I know. And that's how you start these problems. You write down uh, the picture for it develop a mathematical model, draw a picture. On all these related grade problems, draw a picture, step number one. And then you label the picture. And then this is really important because in related grades, um, items are moving. When we were doing the max and min, you had a box that didn't change. Related rates, rates means that things are moving. These are the type of problems where two trains are going on a track, and one's going north and one's going south. I know, and how far apart are they at the same time? Yes. So, no, we'll be fine, so it's moving. So really, you have to figure out when you're setting up the problem, it says right here, Distinguish constant quantities from variables that change. You have to decide for yourself what is changing and what is not. Because what's changing is going to have a derivative associated with it. <coughs> then you write the equation. You know, the equations are easy. In general, the equations are geometric. If it's volume, if we're filling uh, a cone with water, it's a volume equation. The equations are not as difficult. If it's one of the trains going this way and this way, it's almost always the Pythagorean theorem. So writing the equation is not the problem. This is the problem. Drawing your picture and figuring out what is moving and what is not. And then related rates are all implicit differentiation. So, yeah. so we have to differentiate the uh, equation implicitly with respect to time. So uh, because everything is moving, it's going to be dx dt or dy dt. So your variable is always going to be t. So what if we have something like x, y, you have to use the chain rule, or product rule for x, y. Chain rule if it's anything squared and it's moving. I know. OK, at the very end, then, you're going to substitute values for any quantities that depend on time. You have to do it. This is a good point, because it says you have to do it after you differentiate. You cannot put the values in too soon. Here they say putting it in too soon freezes the picture. So that, because you have values for a particular time. You can't put the values in until the very end unless it's a constant. If it's a constant, you can put the value in at the beginning because it's not moving. And then finally, interpret your solution. Well, that just does, you know, you all know that. Does it make sense? Okay, is everybody ready for problem number one? Mm -hmm. What? See, the last thing you do is substitute. The last thing you do is substitute, put all your values in and solve for whatever you're looking at. Yes. Yes. What? Four. What? Four. Four is implicit. You have to implicitly differentiate implicit. Okay. Ready? Ready? Okay. So when you are getting your partner quiz, the first one, you are going to be happy if this is your problem. Okay, yeah. if it's looking like this, you're going to go have, you're going to be, did you find that out? No, no I haven't done it. Yet. Okay, a highway chase. You're going to see this, you're going to go, oh, I'm so excited. These are the easiest kind to do. The police cruiser approaching a right angle, it has to be a right angle. Okay, if it's not a right angle, you have a problem. Okay, because yeah, it has to be right angle to some thing right there. So a police cruiser approaching a right angle intersection from the north. Let's draw it. Here he's coming down here. It's coming from the north, right? So he's going this way. He's approaching our right angle. Here's our right angle. <coughs> right, so here's our police cruiser, and I labeled this Y. So this is how I would start. Okay, Y is my police, is the police. So it's really good to just start right away with your drawing. There's my police cruiser going down. He is chasing a speeding car that has turned the corner and now moving straight east. So this guy, do you see how he's moving this way? And he's X, he's going to be X. Oh, he's our criminal. X is the criminal. So is Mike Speeding away. What? So Mike. Mike's chasing him. Yep, my son is chasing him, chasing the criminal. There we go. Moving straight east. Do you, do you recognize that both people are moving? So Y is moving and X is moving. All right, when the cruiser is 0.8 miles north, 
So this is important too, so because we're actually looking when y is equals 0.8, because this is y, when the police, pro, uh, when he's 0.8 miles north, right here, and the car is 0.6 miles to the east, you want to know what, how this distance is changing. So from here to here, all right, the police determine with radar the distance between them, and the car is increasing at 15 miles per hour. If the cruiser is moving at 60 miles per hour, the instant measurement, what is the speed of the car? Okay, so we have this right here. And this is an easy one? The, yeah, this is an easy one. This is, the, you know why? Because it's Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, that's so there's Pythagorean theorem problems are for sure the easiest. That is the distance between them. Where is the speed Is everyone guaranteed one of these problems or no? Generally, I try to have something, something not so bad like this. What is the speed at? Okay. Here we go. Okay, so we have the position. Then we have, at that instant, can anyone use your calculator and tell me what D is at that very instant? At that very instant, when Y is 8.8 and X is 0.6, what's D? Pythagorean theorem. What's D? Pythagorean theorem. Everybody just said it's going to be 1. 1. Yep, is that what it is? Yes. D equals 1 using Pythagorean theorem. All right, so what else do we know? It says, please determine with greater that the distance between them and the car is increasing, so that means it's positive, at 15 miles per hour. So what we do here is that means that dd, dt, because it's all with respect to time, is 15 and it's positive. So the derivative is the rate at which the object is moving. So dd, dt is 15. The cruiser is moving at 60 miles per hour, so what is the cruiser? So dy, dt is what? 60. 60. Yes, Kristen. Wouldn't No, this, this is changing. The distance between them is changing. Oh wait, and the car is increasing at yeah, 60 miles per hour? 15 miles per hour. What? The cruiser no, the distance. Says the distance between them and the car. No, the, the distance between them and the car. That's uh, this. Uh, the car. But you're absolutely right though, sometimes it could be that they give you the car movement. Okay, here's an important point. Ready? Okay. Do you see how this this guy is moving in and this one is moving out? If, they are, if your two objects are moving in opposite directions, one of them has to be negative. One's negative and one's positive. If they were both moving in, you could make them both negative. If they were both moving out, then it would be both positive. But this one's moving down, and this one's moving this. So the y is going to be dy dt is negative. So dy dt because the criminal turn criminal turn is minus 60. Oh, because he's going down. Positive. Yep, because it's go it's come it's closing the distance. It's coming in. It's going negative. This guy's going out positive. They give you that. The cruise is moving at 60 miles per hour towards the intersection. Do we have a turn. dx? What are we looking for? The speed of the car. What's that? Dx. Dx dt. That's what we're solving for. Dx dt. What? Equals question mark. And that's how you want to start your problem. That's the hardest part. Yeah. That's the hardest part. This was step one. This is drawing the picture and labeling our picture labeling our information. We're going to try and find dx dt. Because now what's our mathematical equation that we're using? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. So now this part's pretty easy as far as that goes. Can I come over here and you can still see me? All right. So Pythagorean theorem, here we go. We have x squared plus y squared, in this case, equals d squared. And here's where it's really important where I talk about the fact that you cannot substitute values too early. At this point, all three items on here, boom, boom, and boom, they are all moving. Ready? Yeah, that's on camera. Okay, we're on camera. Sydney, just say it. All right, these are all moving, so that's why we have to use the implicit differentiation part. So the two comes down, x times the derivative of what's inside. And instead of doing x prime like we have them doing, I'm just going to use dx dt so, you, so it becomes a little bit clearer. So the two comes down, 
Inside stays the same. The derivative of what's inside is dx dt. What about the plus oh, sign? So oh, cool. This is just the chain rule. Two comes yeah. down, x oh, I see. dx dt. Y, y is also <laughs> moving, so two comes down, y, the derivative dy dt. Same thing, the two comes down, d, this is also moving, so that's why we have d, d dt as well here. If it wasn't moving, so it's not if it wasn't moving, the derivative would be zero. We would have put something in. My next problem is like that, so hopefully that'll be good. So now you have all the values. So we're looking for a dx dt, and now at this point, once you've done the differentiation, now you can put in your values. So two x was what? 0. 0.6. 0. 0.6. Dx dt is what we're looking for. Dx dt plus two y was 0. 0.8. This was changing at negative 60, I think, right? Negative 60, yep. Equals 2, our d was 1, and d, d dt was a positive 15. Oh, that's not too bad. No. The problem, this is the hard part. This is the hard part, setting up the problem. Once you get, you guys can all do the differentiation in this. So can somebody, I don't have all these numbers in front of me. Can someone, multiply? this is 1.2 then. Let's see, 1.2 dx dt. What's this? Negative 96. What's this? 30? Okay, yep, so 1.2 dx dt equals 126. Could you divide 126 by 1.2? How fast our criminal is going? One. He's fast. Our criminal is going at 105. He turned. What? This crazy and he way. turned our crazy he guy. Maybe he's he just accelerating after his turn. Wait, the criminal's going this fast? Yep. I like it. These. So on the um, on the actual AP exam. The problems that I've always seen a related rate of problem are mostly Pythagorean there. Oh, so this yeah. next one's a sample AP question. An observer, 70 meters south of a railroad crossing, watches an eastbound train traveling at 60 meters per second. At how many meters per second is the train moving away from the observer four seconds after it passes through the intersection? Okay, so here's, here's this. So here, this is 70. Now, this is important to note, our observer is not moving. Right? Yeah. Observer not moving. Here we go. The train's going this way, right here. So we'll label that X. And so Y is not moving. And let's just stay with D. That's the distance between the two of them. Did everybody kind of have that drawn a little bit? Yes. Right now. Okay. So the train is going south, so the 70 is going down. And then no, the, the person is standing here. Here's our little guy right here. Here's our little guy. Where's the other train? The train's going this way, eastbound. There's only one train. There's only one train in this picture. Come on, Janelle. Yeah, I have to read it while we're That is my issue. I just have a diary. Yeah. So what do you think the 60 meters per second is what? DXDT. Yes, it's DXDT. So this DXDT, because that's what's changed in the little train, DXDT is uh, 60, 60 meters per second. T is going that way, it's going out, so it's positive. The 70 is not moving. The D is moving, and isn't that what we're looking for? How far yeah. is it away from the observer? So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for DDDT. That's what you're looking for. Do we know what dy dt is? Okay, so, it's no, it does not zero. move. It's going to be zero. Oh, it's not accelerating. Yeah. Oh, that's way that. So that's not moving. The, um, the only thing that's hard, 70 is y. Yep. There's multiple choice. The only thing that's hard about this one is that it would be easy to put in 4 in for x. But it's not four. It's after four seconds. So really, what is the value of x? Uh, what? It's 240. It's 240. Yeah. Wow. He's going at 60 miles per hour for four it's seconds. So that's the hardest part of the problem. Oh, okay, yeah. He's going 60 miles per hour for four seconds. So he's going. It's you're at 240. 
How'd you know it's going 60 miles an hour? It's, it's going, going 60 miles an hour. Meters, meters per second. Meters per second, meters per second after four seconds. Oh, meters, meters per second. Per second. Rob, little. So it's 240. 60 miles per hour. <laughs> okay, so now the other thing that you have to calculate is at that exact instant when it's 70 and X is 240, what's D? So you just plug it all. Oh, can we do Pythagorean? Yeah, yep. Alright. So Pythagorean theorem, you got to find out what D is. 250? Yeah. Yep. Oh my god. Okay, so now for setting up this problem, you have you have x squared, that's changing, but y is not changing, so we'll just go 70 squared like this equals d squared. Why didn't it, you multiply the dx the I haven't done it. Haven't, we haven't taken the derivative yet. Okay. We're going to now. So now we take the derivative. X and D are both changing. So we have 2x dx dt plus 0 equals 2d dv dt. What we, that's what we're looking for, right? Oops, I should have put in what was D? Two fifth, oh, no. Now I put them in. So now we'll put this in 2 times 240. And the 70 just got because it's here. It's dx dt 60. Yes. The derivative, the derivative is zero. Two. The derivative of a constant is just zero. Mm -hmm. Does everybody understand where all those numbers are coming from? Where did the 60 come from? Wait, where did 70 go? That's what I said. 70 was right here. Not moving. So it's multiplied by zero. So it's the derivative of this is zero. Okay. Constant, not moving. Yeah. How did we get to? Where is this? Pythagorean theorem. With this, at that instant, 70, 240, Pythagorean theorem. This is 250. So if the derivative is zero and you multiply it, wouldn't it be make that zero? Yeah, that's why it's gone. Well, the derivative of a constant is zero. If we left y in there, zero would have made.